One of the most interesting problems in strength training science is why long-term strength training programs using heavy loads produce much greater gains in maximum strength than strength training with light loads to failure, but both of those types of strength training programs produce the same increases in muscle size. Traditionally, we've assumed that those greater gains in maximum strength after strength training with heavy loads have been caused by larger increases in neural drive, or perhaps increases in load-specific coordination. But the reality is that both changes inside the muscle tendon unit itself and changes inside the central nervous system can contribute to those greater gains in maximum strength after using heavy loads. During heavy strength training, two things happen that allow us to lift the heavy weight. Those two things are an increase in the motor unit recruitment level and a decrease in the fibre shortening velocity. An increase in the motor unit recruitment level means that more muscle fibres are activated. A decrease in the muscle fibre shortening velocity means that each of those muscle fibres produces more force. And together, those two things allow the muscle to produce as much force as it possibly can. If we were to recruit fewer motor units, we'd produce less force. And if we were to move faster, we would also produce less force. That's the force-velocity relationship. During light load strength training to failure, there are two parts to each set. There's the part of the set at the beginning, and there's the part of the set towards the end as we approach muscular failure. Now, in the part of the set at the beginning, the bar speed can either be deliberately slow, we can use a slow tempo, or it can be as fast as possible. Now, if we were to use a bar speed that is slow, then motor unit recruitment would be quite low. Um, because we don't have the maximal level of effort that creates that high level of motor unit recruitment. And this means that the high threshold motor units that control the muscle fibres that grow after strength training are not recruited, um, so hypertrophy doesn't really happen. Now, if we were to move with a maximal bar speed in that early part of the set, then we would have a high level of motor unit recruitment, but the force produced by each muscle fibre would be quite low because of the force-velocity relationship. And this means that mechanical tension on each muscle fibre is low, and that means that, again, hypertrophy doesn't happen. In other words, it doesn't really matter what we do in the first part of the set when we're doing strength training with light loads to failure. Hypertrophy isn't really stimulated either way. However, in the second part of the set, as we approach muscular failure, then two things happen. One is that the motor unit recruitment thresholds fall, and that means our recruitment levels rise, and fatigue causes bar speed to fall, and therefore the muscle fibre shortening velocity decreases, and that increases the level of tension on the working muscle fibres. So we end up in this situation where we have a slow muscle fibre shortening velocity of the high threshold motor unit muscle fibres. And that is exactly what triggers hypertrophy. So this is why heavy strength training and light load strength training to failure produce similar levels of muscle growth because both of them are stimulating the muscle fibres of high threshold motor units with the high levels of recruitment and the slow muscle fibre shortening velocities. The difference between heavy strength training and light load strength training to failure is that during those reps that stimulate hypertrophy, the heavy strength training um, exercise involves all of the muscle fibres producing a high level of force, whereas in the light load strength training to failure uh, type of training, those reps that stimulate hypertrophy involve only the high threshold motor unit muscle fibres producing high levels of force, and the other muscle fibres that are controlled by lower threshold motor units are fatigued. So the overall muscle force is lower when strength training with light loads to failure than it is when doing heavy strength training. This difference in whole muscle force produces a much greater force at the tendon when doing heavy strength training than when doing light load strength training to failure. And this greater force at the tendon means that the tendon experiences different adaptions 
after heavy strength training from light load strength training. In fact, it becomes a lot stiffer after heavy strength training. And this increase in stiffness is beneficial for maximum strength. When we lift a weight, the tendon elongates very slightly as the muscle contracts. Now, the extent to which this tendon elongates affects how much force the whole muscle tendon unit can produce because of the force velocity relationship. If the tendon elongates quite a long way, that means the muscle shortens faster than the muscle tendon unit. If the tendon elongates only a very short way, then the muscle and the muscle tendon unit both um, shorten at the same rate. So a stiffer tendon elongates less when the muscle contracts and therefore that allows us to produce a greater force. So if heavy strength training then allows us to uh, make tendons stiffer, then it will, by that method, increase our ability to produce maximum force. One of the ways in which muscles increase their strength relative to size is by increasing the amount of lateral force transmission that happens. Now, lateral force transmission is the transmission of force from a muscle fibre to its surrounding collagen layer, probably through attachments called customers. And we think that lateral force transmission can increase after strength training by an increase in the number of customers. This increases the efficiency of force transmission between the muscle fibre and the collagen and from there to the tendon. When we lift heavy loads, the muscle fibres in a muscle are all exerting high forces. And that means that they're all exerting high forces laterally against one another. And this could be an important stimulus for increasing the amount of lateral force transmission. In contrast, when we do light load strength training to failure, only a small proportion of the muscle fibres in the muscle are producing high forces. Many of them are fatigued and are not producing high forces. So the need to produce lateral force transmission, the stimulus to increase that amount of force that's transmitted laterally, could be a lot smaller. And this could be one way in which lateral force transmission is preferentially improved after strength training with heavy loads compared to after strength training with light loads to failure. When we lift a heavy load, say over 85 to 90 percent of our one repetition maximum, then all of the motor units within a muscle are activated, are recruited. Now, when we uh, lift a lighter load than that, then not all of the motor units are recruited. However, as we perform additional reps with a lighter load, the motor unit recruitment thresholds reduce and the level of recruitment rises. And this happens because each of the working muscle fibres becomes fatigued and can no longer produce a sufficient level of force to continue the movement. And so new motor units must be recruited to allow more muscle fibres to co contribute to the level of force that's required. Voluntary activation is the amount of the muscle fibres in the muscle that have been activated. So if we have a complete level of voluntary activation, a full level of voluntary activation, then we've basically recruited all the motor units inside the muscle and all the muscle fibres are active in producing force. If we have a sub-maximal level of voluntary activation, an incomplete level, then not all of the motor units have been recruited. Now obviously, if we can increase voluntary activation over time, then we can increase the number of motor units that we have available to us and therefore number of muscle fibres that we've got available to us and that increases our capacity to produce force. Heavy strength training seems to improve our ability to recruit new motor units. It improves our ability, it improves our voluntary activation levels. Now, light load strength training to failure doesn't seem to have quite the same effect. Now, this seems odd because um, models that have explored the effects of um, strength training to failure with light loads on levels of motor unit recruitment um, during strength training have found that motor unit recruitment seems to increase to a maximal level at the end of a set. Um, now obviously during heavy strength training that level of recruitment is there from the beginning and during light load strength training to failure it's only there towards the end. Even so 
This seems strange because we would expect that simply achieving a high level of voluntary activation during the set would lead to improvements in voluntary activation in the future. To understand this, we have to look at some very new research that has compared the effects of high force and low force strength training on levels of motor unit recruitment under fatiguing conditions. And this early research suggests that when we use high forces, this allows us to increase voluntary activation to a much higher level than when we use lower forces, even when the fatigue is present in both cases to the same extent. So it's possible that when we are doing heavy strength training, we do actually achieve higher levels of motor unit recruitment inside the set um, than when we do light load strength training to failure. And this could be why heavy strength training seems to improve voluntary activation to a greater level than light load strength training to failure. Leaving aside coordination, um, there are therefore three different ways in which heavy strength training can improve maximum strength to a greater degree than light load strength training to failure, even though they both produce the same increases in muscle size. And the interesting thing is that despite the belief that these effects are entirely inside the central nervous system, two of the effects are actually inside the muscle tendon unit. So two of the effects that we, we talked about earlier are increases in tendon stiffness and um, increases in lateral force transmission. And both of these happen inside the muscle tendon unit. We can't see them happening, but they're still happening. Um, the other effect, obviously, is the increase in the level of voluntary activation, the change in motor unit recruitment levels, which increase the number of motor units that we have accessible to us, which increases the number of muscle fibers that we have accessible to us, which increases the capacity for us to produce force. So in all of these three ways, we can increase the maximum capacity of the muscle to produce force without increasing its size. And these effects seem to occur to a greater degree after heavy strength training and after light load strength training to failure.